for the episode that some of you have been waiting for, the ultra light Yagi that would be perfect for soda. It performed way better than I ever possibly imagined. Am I legible? They're coming in full quiet. Right, so let's just dig straight into this thing. I want people to understand something. This is going to fit in a cargo pocket. Now this is the big first version and it's kind of clunky. Now granted, it's not just these. You have a handle and some fiberglass rods. Things I am working on is a better spider and little tiny tips. In this version, I found a squeegee handle that was just perfect, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't just use a half inch dowel. All things considered, I'd be willing to bet that this is the lightest and most portable Yagi so far. One of the first things we need to do is go for a Yagi calculator. Now the one I ended up using was this guy right here. You scroll down and this gives me the lengths that I need. This is the 3D file that I generated to make this. And yes, I have a 3D printer, some of you do not, but that's okay because there's always 3D print services that you can go out to. If you're interested in this, leave a comment. I'm considering making kits. And if you'd be interested in buying a kit of this Yagi that is quick and easy to assemble, then let me know down below. I used a piece of Tyvek, but you can use a tarp you are going to need some one inch wide copper tape, just like this, quarter inch wide copper tape to make the hairpin for this antenna. And I reinforced it with fiberglass reinforced tape over top of the copper once it is laid down. Other things that you're going to need is a BNC pigtail and you will be able to find links to a video down below that will show you how to build one. And this can be either taped on or soldered on to the antenna. To start this build, I'm gonna lay out all the dimensions onto the sheet that I am going to use, and I'm gonna lay down the copper tape. One thing that you'll notice is, is I don't have any video of me putting in that little hairpin piece. And that is about five inches long, and that is just so that we get the right impedance match for this antenna. Now you attach your BNC connector, and really after that, it's just a matter of attaching the frame. I have a 3D printed spider that I used. I have 3 16 glass fiber rods that I purchased at a local store. I'll find some links for some of this stuff and put it down below if you wanna grab some. If you want the 3D print file for this, I am going to have it on my Patreon page. The first version I'm going to allow anybody to have for free, but the second version, once I've iterated it, I'll be putting it up for sale, but it'll be super cheap, and you could buy it as an individual item, or if you're a Patreon member, you will get it for free. Of course, I did a quick V&A check, and you can see that it's not the best in the world, but it's low enough to be usable, and I'm positive I can do much better on the next one that I'm gonna build. Now what I did is I went to repeater book and I got a list of repeaters in my local area and then I got the rough directions on which way I'd aim the Yagi. The place I chose to do all of this testing happens to be fairly close to my place and it also happens to be one of the highest points in Calgary. For the most part, I have a clean shot at everything except for southeast and everything else should be good. So. Let's see how this antenna does. So I've got a list of targets, probably a lot more than I could ever possibly hit. I know some people are gonna go, why did I not do simplex? And I will do simplex, but I didn't have two radios that can point to each other like this with two Yaggies to figure out what the actual distance is. Trust me though, I've got plans on this. The local clubs around here seem to have taken notice and I'm working with somebody to do exactly that test. Monday, and always as a good test is look up your local weather and you can find out if you're receiving anything. This is full bars and obviously very loud, so good spot. Now this repeater that I got first off was not very much of a surprise. This is Victor Echo 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray doing a radio test. Uh, you make it just fine, you take it up here, Congress. This is Victor Echo 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray, radio check. Yeah, yeah, no difference. Uh, <laughs> of course, I didn't expect any. Okay, so now we're trying one that's uh, 30 miles away. This is Victor Echo 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray, doing a radio check on a Yagi, trying to see how far I can shoot. This is 30 miles from my location. Six, seven, six, 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 six,
Mike, Tango, thank you so much. You've just made me a very happy man. So I know I can get 30 miles out of this uh, this Yagi I can throw into my pocket. Victor Echo 6, the Sierra Fox truck. X-ray. This has a radio check. Mike Tango, do you copy? Six Mike Tango. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> how it was before. Yeah, copy that. This this repeater is only about two or three more miles out further from my location as the crow flies. Now after 45 miles, things seemed to be kind of tapering off and I just couldn't actually hit anything. I went through a whole bunch of failures in this, but then there was this. Oh, baby. This is Victor Echo 6, I see our Fox Trot X-ray. I am testing a Yagi on low power, seeing if uh, how far I can reach out. Does anybody pop it? Yes! Copy that. I missed your uh, call sign, but I do have Windborne, and I know I can at least hit it. Um, am I legible? Very coming in full quiet. <laughs> Copy that. That is making me super happy. I'm on at 50 miles on five watts. Just pointing the uh, this pocket uh, pocketable uh, Yagi. Thank you so much. Can you say your call sign again? That's Victor Echo 6, Alpha Alpha Tango. Victor Echo 6, Alpha Alpha Tango. I have got you clear. Like I said, uh, got to learn how to point the Aggie. Um, very much appreciate your time. And uh, do you mind if I use you on a YouTube video? No, that's just fine. USL. Yeah! 54 freaking miles. <laughs> Here's the thing. One thing I noticed with this contact was, is I was having problems picking him up, but he told me I was full quieting on his repeater. That's telling me that I was aimed perfectly and I was hitting his repeater no problem. But because his antenna wasn't optimized or pointed at me, I had problems receiving him. I was just getting the edge of his conversation. I was reaching out 55 miles, or about 88 kilometers, which is nothing to be sneezed at, especially at five watts. Now I know somebody's gonna say that I reached the ISS with like five watts using my HT, and I totally understand that, but you weren't combating a bunch of terrain and over the horizon kind of shots here. So in this case, it was pretty cool. There is one possibility, and I was hitting the repeater, I was kerchunking it, but I couldn't quite hear the person who was responding. This is Victor Echo 6, a Sierra Fox Trot X ray. Can anybody hear me on this repeater? This is Victor Echo 6, Sierra Fox Trot X ray. I know I can tap the repeater, but I do not hear anything back, nor am I uh, likely being heard. So I'm going to clear this repeater. Thank you. Now, I hopefully wasn't walking over top of somebody on this, and I was pretty excited. It's the next day, and I figured I'd dig in a little more, and I realized that I was hitting the Central Alberta Amateur Radio Club repeater, which is Victor Echo 6 Quebec Echo. Turns out that it's 150 kilometers away. Is there anybody at that club that was listening at about two or three in the afternoon on October 30th that can confirm that they heard me hitting that repeater? I'm really quite curious if I actually did. Now for an antenna that's made of foil tape that costs in the order of $25, $30 Canadian, I'd say that's not bad for a Yagi, or a Flaggy for that matter. The fact that I can throw this into a cargo pocket, 
<laughs> that's a definite bonus. Hopefully you stay tuned. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm going to leave links to everything down below. I'll also have links to my Patreon. If you want to sponsor this channel and help me develop this antenna and many others. Again, thank you very much, 7-3. This is Victor Arco 6, Sierra Foxtrot X-Ray, and I am going to clear this channel.